Well, hello there again. You know, I made one of these things yesterday, day before, I don't remember. But it was about the idea of imaginary money. Now, you know that, uh, well, they turned the American currency, the dollar and everything, $10, $100 bill, into monopoly money. The coinage has probably cost more to make, more to stamp out than it is worth actually in its face. You know, it used to have silver and stuff. That was the coinage was worth about what the face value was. But when they changed to this, uh, well, when old President Nixon unpegged the dollar from gold so it could float on the money markets with these other coinages and everything they could trade and you know, do all that big stuff with them people back there on Wall Street and everything to do with them big college educations on how to finance and economics and everything. Well, it went crazy because if I remember right, back when that went, gold was valued at 32 something an ounce. Troy ounce in the United States, what we had in uh, uh, res our gold reserves. Well, now we don't have much of a gold reserve. Like I said the other day, we've only got a few millions of dollars worth of gold. But we got all kinds of currency out there floating around on the faith and goodwill of the United States people. Well, I got no goodwill towards any of that phony money or anything. And I see today where a troy ounce of gold floats around somewhere, you know, just gold, not just gold coins and all that. Floats around $2,000 a troy ounce, maybe a little bit more. But they got, you know, you go on in them places with the gold, they got all kinds of things for grams and for all coins from different realms and all this kind of stuff. You know, so you got to beware. It's just like going down to buy a used car. You walk in, and you buy, you got one car sitting here, it's a year old. Only got 10,000 miles on it, and if you get to looking, it ain't worth what it would take to put it in the toilet, because of the condition and everything. Okay, and you got another one over here that's 15 years old, and they want uh, $2,000 for it. Well, it might only cost 500 bucks. Well, $2,000, yeah, that's what I just said. And so... It might be a good car that will last five years without any problems, except maybe spark plugs and tires. Okay? <laughs> well, that gold stuff. I was looking. You know, 14 karat gold they sell. 14 karat gold bars. Look at good that. That's when it says 99.99 pure, and it's $2,000. Now, that sounds out fair. But if it's uh, 14 karat gold and it's X amount of grams that you don't know how much of a troy ounce that is and they want $2,000 for it, better hold on to your shorts. <laughs> See, now, all this, then I gotta give you out this. You know, and with what these uh, climate uh, doomsday people are talking about, the way they're treating the farmers, trying to chase all the farmers out of business, and they're trying to get so they can make all these foods, this food I see they got, they're trying to make, they're making in uh, petri dishes in the lab, and they're making meat in a petri dish in a lab and everything. Well, you know that's fine and dandy. Go pull out the old movie, Soylent Green with that there uh, guy that uh, played Moses in a starring role. Uh, 
Well, there's a few others too. I guess Logan's Run kind of goes in that direction, but not not like Soylent Green did. You see what the government did to make food for the people. Yeah, now see, that's that's what you gotta watch. Uh, there are places on this planet right now where that two thousand dollar ounce of gold ain't worth squat because there ain't no potatoes or rice. There's nothing to eat and there ain't no way to get it. You can't eat gold. Uh, there's going to be a day come with the way things are going because, you know, I, I'm a little leery all this climate stuff because what they're doing with all the CO2 and everything, they're getting rid of the farmers and the food sources and everything. Now, when there ain't any food, what's going to happen? It won't matter how much gold you got, and it sure won't matter how much currency you got that's under that good faith and everything of the United States, because there won't be nothing to buy. Starvation is just unless you're going to eat yourself, or your neighbor, or your kids. Well, you see, I kind of wonder about this stuff, and I can get in lots of trouble because I just. But now I got an idea what's going to happen, and there are scientists out there that every day, as I pay attention, there's a couple, three different sites on the, uh, all that YouTube, and there's some papers that get written, and I see come up from big name scientists. And there are even peer review papers out there, even though the major media deny it. They say everybody's into all this climate change and CO2 and methane destroying the world. But there's other people out there, but the media ain't covering it, the politicians ain't covering it, and them great big billionaires that are sitting there pulling all of them marionette strings that I was talking about on one of these things, they sure ain't going to tell you about it. Because that's some kind of an effort to put everybody in them feedlots like the cattle and the pigs are in now. Okay? That's where they want us. But me, one of my biggest heroes out of the Founding Father's Day, that old fella that stood there and I don't care what anybody else wants as for me give me liberty or give me death well they're just about taking most of my liberty away from me so I really don't care if they starve me to death but they're trying and I sure hate to see all these poor little kids and that it's just being born and just growing up. And you know that God of mine, he says, anybody that had hurt one of these little ones, one of these children, not the 12 to 20 year olds, but the ones under 12, anybody that would hurt them and they're very susceptible to starvation and malnutrition and things, Anybody hurt one of them be better for them if they had a millstone hung around their neck and were tossed into the sea. Think about it. If that creator, that God I believe in, is hanging around out there just waiting until conditions are right, uh, there's a lot of people who've got a lot of worries. They ain't even thinking about it because they consider themselves gods. That's the stuff that that anti-god felt. A lot of people calling me antichrist or whatever. That's what that fella's telling them. Here, you can make all this money, you can have all this power, you can have all this stuff. Just do this. Destroy everything that God has created. What they're trying to do. Well, I'll talk to you again. I ask my God to bless y'all because there's sure a lot of people listening to the wrong fella. Have a good day.